Hello everybody, it is me, Coffee Stitcher. How is everyone doing? Oh, what's this? Oh, why, this is the new Stitchy Box coffee mug. Uh, a Stitchy Box coffee mug. Of course I had to have it. So I now officially have a coffee mug for my videos. Mm. It's actually a really nice mug, so highly recommended. Um, how was everyone's week? I need more coffee. God, it's only 9.36. Hmm. Mm. Well, I hope everyone had a great week. Um, I got a reasonable amount of stitchy time in. Um, started Tin Man, so should finish him today and I'll move on to Magical Creatures because I haven't gotten printer ink yet, so I can't print out my pattern for um, Moscow for postcards. Um, so, but I do have some haul and uh, I've got some web updates, obviously the usual Q and A. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my Oz stuff and since it, the, the Oz feature and since it's April, it will be favorite things. My dog has just discovered the curio cabinet and is apparently licking it. That's great. Okay. Um... He was sitting behind me a moment ago, but I think he popped down before the video actually started. So, um, all right. So we'll jump right on in. We'll start with Q&A and then do haul because the haul leads into the Q&A. Uh, or the Q&A leads a little into the haul. Um, all right, so the first is, well, there's two from Shirley, wait, Shirley Mira... Miranaka, and I think I mispronounced it last week. I may have mispronounced it this week. Um, and we have a Remy bear. Hello, Remy. I don't know if you can actually... Oh, there he is. He's behind us. There. There we go. There's a fluffy puppy in the video. Um, if you were in possession of the powder of life, what three things would you bring to life? Okay, so a little bit of clarification for those who haven't read the Oz books. In The Marvelous Land of Oz, there is this stuff called the Powder of Life. Um, and occasionally in other adaptations, it's called, like, the Magic Come Alive Powder. It's really specific. Um, and basically, you sprinkle it on, you say these, this magical saying, and the whatever you've sprinkled the powder on comes to life. Um, I'm not sure there's anything in Animate that I would bring to life. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything. Like, well, no, I guess I would probably bring my teddy bear to life. That would be pretty awesome. Beyond that, I don't really think I've got anything. Um, a little fuzzy face. Yes. Can you lay down? Can you sit or lay down? That would be very nice. Or just stand there and stare. That works too. Um, good boy. Um, yes, I love you. Yeah, I think the teddy bear would probably be it. Um, yeah. Because um, I really don't think anything else I would want to know what it was thinking. Um, another question. What does ORT stand for? I believe it stands for Overly Ridiculous Thread. I can never remember quite what the R stands for, but basically it's just those little short ones because they're not useful. Um, I think or overly redundant. I think I've heard both. Um, so overly ridiculous, overly redundant. Um, but yeah. Um, Gmos asks, what is the purpose for stitching things on perforated paper? She just got a millhole kit and it's on perforated paper and she thinks that it won't last. Can you please discuss at some point why a project is done on perforated paper versus fabric? I'm thinking of swapping out the uh, perforated pa paper for some linen. God, saying perforated paper over and over again is not easy. Um, there's a couple of reasons. With the millhole kits, um, 
it's to kind of cut down on cost perforated paper is i mean you get two like nine by 14 sheets for like four bucks as opposed to the linen which would be like seven or eight so it is a little cheaper um it is acid free so it should last it's really sturdy you can do a lot of things to it you can frog it till your heart's content and it doesn't really shred um and in fact a lot of older british samplers that i've seen around are actually done on perforated paper it was a very big thing in the victorian era from what i've kind of come to understand um i like it for ornaments because it is sturdier so it will hold up year after year um and they lay a little flatter um that's so i it really depends on the piece um but I enjoy the perforated paper. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's nice. It's easy to hold. It's sturdy. Um, you can't do fractionals on it. So on a couple of like the stuff for Brooke, I've had to do a little bit of alteration with back stitching because I can't do fractionals. But by and large, I really, really like it. So um, that's... Um, So there you go. That's the, um, the difference. Um, the, I think, like I said, the millhill kits, it's just because it's cheaper, so they can put it in. Um, also, it's a lot easier to hold a small piece of perforated paper than it is a small piece of linen and keep your tension going. Um, so that's, that's, I think, kind of why, but, um, so a lot of it is the size. I personally, like I said, I really like perforated paper. Um, not enough to just give up linen completely, um, or at all, but I do really like the perforated paper. And it makes a nice change. Um, a Blimey Cat asked if I have the whole set of, I'm guessing, original books. Um, not in the fancy old edition, but yes, I do have all of the bomb books, and I have two, four, six, eight, ten or so of the Ruth Plumley Thompson books, and I have one of the John Arneal books. Um, so I don't have all of the famous 40, as they're referred to in the community. Um, but I do at least have, I think I have two copies of. Yeah, I have two copies of every bomb book, and I have at least three copies of the first seven. I have a crap ton of copies of the first. Um, all right, Paula King, I will be answering your question shortly. Um. Oh, thanks to everyone for their feedback on the conversions. It was actually in a Joan Elliott group, um, and Chris Cross Stitcher was the one who found it and linked me to it. Um, so that was that was really really helpful. I did not make it that far on Seaflora, um, so after I finish this month's stitch alongs, I shall go back to Seaflora. Um, and work on it um because i'm i'm close um but monday monday i think i played video games tuesday was not much and then wednesday i think i started picking colors yeah because we had dinner with my grandmother so i started pick i did my color picking um, so I didn't get much time this week on Seaflora, so, but you'll see that. Um, and G, bas we basically refer to each other as babe. And then if we're really trying to get the other one's attention, Garrett. 
Um, it's only when we introduce people to each other. Um, let's see. So I think that's all of the questions. Um, there was one statement complaining about the fact I say um a lot. Um, um, um. More coffee. Honestly, I figure um is less offensive than saying like uh over and over and over again, which I used to do in middle school because it was the 90s and everyone talked like they were in Clueless. Or at least they did in my middle school. I don't know if that was everywhere, but definitely in my middle school, there was a lot of as ifings and whatevers and loser and the, like talking like we were from the valley. Which is funny because Cher definitely does not live in the valley because they have to go to that party in the valley. And she's like, ugh, it's all the way in the valley. Um, but anyway. All right, so Hall. So this goes to Paula King. Um, first, a major apology that, it, that I was delayed in this. Um, I actually got this during the move and put it in a bag and promptly forgot. Um, not because I didn't love it, but just because so many things were going on. And then I saw her post and went, oh, I didn't show it off. So in light of my new thing for Noah's Arcs, she sent me this really cool All Malin Designs book, Noah and Company. And it's got several really, really cute designs. Um, I really like this one that's on the pillow that has the, the Thunderbolt. Um, I like the alphabet and I like the long sampler really well. And I like this sampler over here. And actually the samplers all have um, specialty stitches. There's a better picture of one of the samplers. So I think one of these was probably going to show up in Mania. Um, not 100% for sure yet, but I think one of them probably will. So thank you, Paula King, and my apologies for the delay on it. I tried to actually shoot you a message on um, Instagram, but I couldn't find our original conversation and I couldn't remember your screen name because I'm a terrible person. So, um, then I got my fabric of the month from Under the Sea Fabrics. There isn't a fabric this month from Lourdes, um, because of some personal and family needs. This one is part of her princess, princess, uh, princess bride theme. It's called Buttercup. It's a beautiful yellow color. Um, and if it were longer, it would, and this color may be another contender for the giant Harry Potter sampler. I'm not sure yet. Um, but it's a beautiful yellow. Um, so I really need to sit down. Probably will do it like next Sunday. I need to sit down and go through my stash and really make my decisions on mania. Um, and what's going to be started and what needs to have things purchased for it. Because I know there are some things that I still have to purchase. Um, and then I got my March Just the Threads. It's called Floral Brights. A handful of things. Um, first, a Wildflowers by Ka the Karen Collection and Sun Glow. And it's not showing up quite as well here. It's a yellow and pink sort of mix. Um, Color-wise, it's similar to, I want to say, Blossom by Gast in terms of, like, the shade ranges. Um, but obviously it's Karen Collection. So, um, then two little limited edition Silk Mori's in purple and pink. A Dinky Dyes in Mother of Pearl. Um, this one is a painter's threads. It is stranded cotton, um, called Clement by Tentaculum. Um, so it's from Germany. Um, and it's sort of yellow. It's got some greens mixed in. Um, it's interesting. I like it. And then another fabulous vineyard silk in Imperial Palace, which is a gorgeous purple. Um, I really like the vineyard silks. So that was my Just the Threads haul for the month. Um, so 
And I know Stitchybox shipped this week. I got a shipping confirmation last night. So sometime this week, I will be back with a very, very fast Stitchybox unveiling. And I can't wait to see, because this is the Halloween box, and it's based on Edward, Mu Edward Nuke's The Scream, which is one of my favorite paintings. All right, so now we've got whip updates. So first, I'll show you where I'm at on Seaflora. Ah. Come on, there we go. Okay, so last week I had finished about there. I did get the rest of the green and the tail done, and I got started on the little curled ribbon. There it is up there. So I've got that to do, then I'll fill in my purples, and then I'll move up. So there's probably a good two weeks worth of work left in her um, before she's completely done. Um, but she's coming along quite swimmingly. Um, and I'm already kind of looking at my next Mirabilia that I want to do. I know I've got um, Gathering Eggs and Raven Queen and the houses. And I've got a lot of that, those partially kitted. I've got At The Met, which would become Carol Channing. I've got that kitted. Um, the, I do like the, what I've seen so far of Juliet, but I don't like the cost of Juliet. Um, that's ridiculous. Um, if I'm paying that much money to kit something up, I want it to be something not Romeo and Juliet. Um, and so we'll see. Um, I do still really love Stargazer, but I don't have it. I, so I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do next. Um, I know this next one I really kind of want to do a color conversion with. Um, so that's where I'm kind of indecisive. Um, I know I've never done a Joan Elliott. I might do a Joan Elliott, um, but I haven't decided. Um, we'll see. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at there. Um, but I definitely want to try and finish this, and I would like to try and finish Blue Jeans and Daisies before Mania. That was my goal. I don't seem to know how successful I'm going to be. We'll see. All right, so then the next up is our illustrious Tin Man. And it shows up better in here, thankfully. When I was in the living room last night, I was looking at I was thinking, I may have accidentally used the wrong color. Um, but that's okay, because he's made up of parts of tin, so it doesn't really matter. And he will be finished, definitely, I think, probably today. Um, but here's where I'm at. I'm not do... I did a color... Con uh, some converting because I wanted him to be a little more rusty and muted to fit in better with the main five because um, Brooke had him super sparkly so there will be some sparkle but not as much as she had um, but here he is so I actually used a Karen Collection Water Lily this is cedar um, and I took the brown gray parts versus the blue gray parts and then his and that's for his I guess pelvis the chest, the gloves, and then down here I'm actually using the blue-gray parts of um, cedar for his shoes. The legs and little joints in the upper arms, those are aged pewter, same with his face. Um, and then this is from Gast, and then this is tin bucket from Gast, and that'll also be the liner on his shoes, and there's two stitches up there. Um, and then I'm using pebble for the lighter grays, um, so he's, he's almost done. And then of course the two browns for his ax handle. Um, and I'm going to do some sparkle for the joints cause they're going to be kind of rusty. Um, so he should be finished. And then, like I said, I'll do the April, um, uh, magical creatures. So there we go. Um, that's everything with my whips and such. So now it's time for April was supposed to be my favorite things. 
So let me grab it because I forgot to do that. Unfortunately, it's right here. All right. So in the 19, in 1975, Marvel and DC, for some reason, teamed together to issue a comic book version of The Wizard of Oz. It's an oversized comic, so it retailed for $1.50 in those days. Uh, and it is, as you can see, the authorized edition of the MGM Masterpiece. And it is a direct adaptation, as you can see, of the film. Um, down to a lot of, like, various, like, can Kansas isn't in CB, it's in blues and purples. But still, it's gray. Um... And they even work in the songs a little bit. Um, like, there's the illustration of Over the Rainbow. Um, but they're really, really... It's a really pretty straightforward, fantastic adaptation with the limited color usage available in the 70s. Um, and I wanted and loved this thing for years before I finally, finally got one. Um... So they actually went ahead, they did do the second, they did do Marvelous Land of Oz. Oh, well, here's the map of Oz. Yeah, like, they went all out. Um, the, uh, they did do their first adaptation of Marvelous Land of Oz, which is the second in the series, um, due to come out November 11th of 1975. Um, and then they announced and had started Ozma of Oz and then found out copyright wise, they didn't actually have the rights to it because it wasn't in the public domain yet. Um, it is now, but it wasn't in 1970, I guess that would have been 1976 and they were getting ready to release it. So there is some artwork out there for it, but that's it. That was, it just stopped. So, and that was the last one. Um, so I don't have Land of Oz. Um, it is out there, but I don't have a copy. Um, and they did actually, that artwork got licensed out a little bit. So you do occasionally see some beach towels with this image. There's actually, um, I want to say a Bucilla embroidery kit or two out there from the same time period with this image. Um... Which would be kind of cool to find. There was also some wallpaper. And I believe a coloring book. Um, so, but this was kind of at the... Really the beginning of the, the... This was kind of right in the middle of the 70s Oz revival. Um, because you had the Wiz, you had the Mega Line, you had this. Um, the TV airings were getting increasingly more popular. Um... So Oz was really making a reappearance um, in a big way. Um, so there you go, yeah. So there are multiple comic adaptations out there, but this is the only one that's actually the movie. Um, so that's kind of cool, and it's one of my favorite things. I, I just, I don't know, I've always really liked it. Um, and I was really glad when I finally got one. Um, so... Yeah. Um, Alright, so in this upcoming week, there will be the finishing of the Tin Man, there will be the April Magical Creatures, which is the Lawn Gnome, and then hopefully I will have printer ink and I can go on to Moscow. Um, I may still have, I may have to work both of them off my phone, which is not my favorite way of stitching, um, but that may be what I do, or I may just be bringing my laptop into the living room and working off my laptop. So, uh, 